Welcome to Magic. Nice to see that uh, full hall today at the very early. My name is Yusni, as I think the introducer has mentioned. I'm in charge of the international partnership uh, under the ASEAN Centre Entrepreneurship. Um, probably before I start, how many of you guys here are entrepreneurs? Come on. Too early, is it? How many are entrepreneurs? Not even half. So you guys are not entrepreneurs. What are you guys doing here? I know there's a free food. Um, well, uh, before I start, I mean, how many of you guys have been to Magic before? Okay, at least half. So how many of you guys have been to any Magic program? Just three. So I think Magic is not doing good work then. <laughs> so we need to do more. <laughs> Okay, um, maybe before I start, um, um, I just want to share because I think today the uh, theme is about growing global. Um, we in Magic actually have started our unit called Asian Entrepreneurship back in 2015. Uh, how, how actually it started is because of when I came into Magic back in 2015, I used to have my own IT company. That was back in 2000. Uh, one thing that I realized when I did my own IT company that I never thought of going anything beyond Malaysia market. And that's what mistake that I made. And now, when I actually joined this unit, and I noticed that actually the collaboration that we have within ASEAN market is huge. I probably will share more towards ASEAN uh, perspective. Uh, if, I, if you guys look at the agenda, I think there's a people coming from Madrid. Are they here today? Yeah, there you go. So, and also there's also a lot of uh, subject matter expert and also a lot of speakers they're going to share with you about going global. But where I'm going to focus is because of when I see that one thing that was struck me when someone asked me a question back then, they asked me that how can you never look at ASEAN as your local market? I think someone of you have probably been asked this question, right? If you say how many of you think that Malaysia is your local market, everyone will raise their hand. Because that's where you're coming from. But when people ask you, how come you didn't think of Malaysia, no, sorry, ASEAN, as your local market? And that's a different perspective altogether. All right? So how does magic play a role? How does we help you guys? So we actually, under the Ministry of Finance, used to be. That's how we started back in 2014. But uh, recently, with all this new structure of the government, we actually have been uh, moved into the Ministry of Entrepreneurial Development and specifically looking into entrepreneurship per se. So what is our mandate? So our mandate is actually about ensuring, you know, how to grow market via creativity innovation. All right? And we don't look into just the, what we call it, high growth startup. We also look into the uh, social impact and impact driven startup. But item three, which actually is the creating startup to become regional global player. This is what we want to try to do. But again, with all the initiatives that we have, or initiatives that probably, you know, Matrix we share, even our sister agency, MDAC, or even others, all these initiatives is only men, is only will be successful if, let's say, the entrepreneur are in this room, are thinking beyond Malaysia market. Make sense? All right. So how, how does magic play a role? So we have a lot of programs, a lot, a lot of programs, right? We run programs on daily basis, on monthly basis, weekly basis. We also have programs, we call it a structured program and unstructured program. So structured program is like our Exeter program. I, I can see some of our alumni from our Exeter program. Can you raise your hand? All right, so those two are actually from our Exeter program where we have four months boot camp, Exeter program. And we also have program that actually run throughout the year. So all these programs actually help to actually build entrepreneurship into capacity. So we, we actually concentrate on capacity building. We don't mind about your business model because we go across the board. But as long as it goes half with creativity innovation, that's where we come, where we come in. Right? So if you look at, you look at the, the journey, it's like you know, from community to workshop to accelerator. So that's where my unit come in. Accelerator. Accelerator is where we look into beyond Malaysia market. So ACE started back in 2015 by having a component where we have partners in every ASEAN countries. So that's why I said let's look into ASEAN first. Right? 
So what program that we have run, so far we have run things like, you know, the exchange program, where we bring local startups from Malaysia to go beyond Malaysia market. We go to Indonesia, Thailand. And so, funny thing is that when we go to other country, most of these people also have the same kind of mindset. Right? They wanted to go into other ASEAN countries as well. So people will ask, why should we do this? Why should we actually you know, work together with a potential competitors that we might have in other country? But again, in business, in real world, we need collaboration. Right? For us to actually go into other market, we might need to find a partner. We might to find a you know, value, value creation via a partner that can help us to bring into that market. So this is where we started with all these you know, potential partners that we have, where we have currently, that we work together in every ASEAN countries. So you name it. Right? So let me just share with you a bit of the ASEAN snapshot. If you're looking at Malaysian market alone, there's about 30 million population. But if you, took, if you, take, if you take ASEAN as your, in, your local market, there's about 630 million population. And currently, if you look at the plus point and the negative point, currently ASEAN is the seventh largest economy worldwide. That's about 2.5 trillion. And we become the fourth largest in 2030. What does that mean? So even though we actually say that we're looking into ASEAN, but we also have a lot of other nations, other regions come and knocking our door. We have a lot, currently, to be honest with you, for the last six months, we have a lot of Korean market coming into Malaysia, and they've been visiting Magic per se. And we also have a lot of from Taiwan trying to look into ASEAN market. And we also have partners in other parts of the region, for example, from Middle East, from the, from the European country. And they all start looking into our ASEAN market. And the question is that, why are we not capitalizing our own market? All right? And for us to help these people to come in, we said one thing. We will do reciprocal. All right? We will assist these people coming into the ASEAN market. Obviously, then, because the opportunity is that if they say they come here, they probably bring more investment. But reciprocally, we want them to actually open their door as well so that we can bring our local startup, you guys, to those countries. But the question is that, are we ready? Are we looking into the market? Like I said, my own journey last time, back in 2000, when I started my own company, I never thought of going beyond ASEAN market or beyond Malaysian market because I thought Malaysian market could have enough for me to see sustain. It doesn't work that way nowadays. All right? So you look at the, even like, you know, the, the bottom part, there are 260 million internet users, 700 million mobile connections. That's huge market. That's huge potential. If you look a bit of this, you know, when, when, when people ask, how big is ASEAN market? Well, you keep on talking about ASEAN market, right? How big it is? If you look on the right side, there's two very prominent, Grab and Gojek. How many of you guys know how much Grab value, market value right now? Grab market value. Sorry? Not yet. <laughs> Grab is about 10 billion US dollar. They just raised their two billion, uh, you know, raised fund recently, and their closest competitor is Gojek. What is Gojek value creation, uh, market value? Gojek is the closest competitor to, uh, to Grab. Same amount, ten billion. And again, and again, they are only ASEAN players. Can you see the potential now? Right. Both Grab and Gojek are only bringing in ASEAN market. And their, value creation, and their market value is about, about 10 million right now. You can Google it right now if you want to. All right? And that's how big potential of ASEAN market alone. So there's a lot of others, if you notice that, like Bukalapa, Traveloka, Tokopedia, a lot of them are from Indonesia. And they are start becoming the regional player. So the question is that, where are we? Are we playing in the same field? Are we want to be part of them? The questions like to, to you guys. Right? The answer is from what's the dream that you want to have? In terms of you know, the, the current um, um, VC market, actually, obviously, everyone actually knows about this. Right? Singapore, the most active current for uh, VC market. 
And I've been traveling quite a bit. Indonesia, Vietnam, they are coming very, very fast, especially, Indonesia, especially Vietnam. And recently, we had this one conference called Techstar. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 Techstar, yes. Uh, happened in Da Nang, in Vietnam. And at that point in time, the government actually made an announcement that they're going to go full force in terms of digital economy, and they're going to put all the investment into infrastructure in Vietnam. And if you ask any one of you guys, how much actually you know about Vietnam market in terms of the you know, technical capability of the, the Vietnamese when it comes to like programmers and all that? Their, their group are big. Reason is because Vietnam have a lot of influence from states. And a lot of these people now actually are well educated in, in states and now they're coming back to Vietnam and they're building their own local market and they're going beyond regional market. We need to be aware of this. As entrepreneurs, we need to be aware that our current comfort are not going to be there for long. Why I'm sharing this? From the government perspective, we can, we can only do certain programs, we can only encourage, but we can't see the success unless the player themselves take the initiative. All right? Yeah, that's the theme song. <laughs> anyway, I'm just telling you. Um, by the way, so what we have done so far, we have actually created the platform where we have each and every ASEAN countries, we have actually equivalent to what, at least like what magic is, or we even have government and private sector, they're going to support us. So how we started is that we create a, a platform where we call it ACE, which is actually a key, uh, uh, you know, what we call it as a key services. So any startup that want to come to Malaysian market, we assist. We actually see in terms of you know, helping to, to, you know, to open the, the company in Malaysia, to even get MSC status, to even get visa. So what we ask from them is that how can they do a reciprocally for us so that they can open their, their doors so that we can bring some of our startup to those markets as well. Right? And we've been doing that. We actually have done with Indonesia, we have done with Thailand, we have done with Vietnam recently. But the biggest challenge that my team and Malaysia has is we couldn't find enough applicants to come and going abroad with us. And either those actually have actually wanted to apply, it doesn't actually qualify. Reason being is that because maybe, as I said, the mindset is that they just want to confirm, be in the local market first before they go regional. So what if they say we can change that mindset? They look, ASEAN is where our local market is. So as I mentioned just now, we have also been you know, approached by partners from Korea a lot, recently a lot from Korea, and also from Taiwan market. And why we go in Taiwan? Because last time, uh, when we talk about going China market, it looks so huge, right? But then we found out actually, one thing that actually um, you know, missing in our local ecosystem is the maker community. And Taiwan have a lot. And this is where they start coming into Malaysia market, looking into our shore, looking into this opportunity in Malaysia market, because that is one I think that we actually still missing. And hopefully, by collaborating with them, we can also be part of this ecosystem. Why are we so quiet? I'm not talking about serious stuff here. I'm just talking about something that you know for the future. I don't have much slide here. Okay, because my role here actually is just to share with you guys how Magic can support. There's a lot of you know, other agencies like Martrade, MDEC and all that. How can we support you guys? How can we play a role to actually bring you guys to the next level? And as I said, under the Ministry of Entrepreneur Development, where the mandate actually is to bring, one actually the one actually that we create actually is to bring our local player to abroad. And that is what the mandate that we've given to us. And we have given that opportunity to work together with a lot of other government agencies that actually are willing to work together with us. I would like to open the floor for a big question. I think I don't have... How much do I have? Oh, I still have five more minutes. Awesome. All right. Yes. So maybe... maybe uh, I just you do have a question, one. actually. Sorry? We do have a question, but apparently it's not on Slido. There's a little bit of a technical issue. Do you want me to read it out to you? Yes, please. Okay, so someone in the audience was asking, does Magic still have the Activate program? 
All right. So Activate program actually is where we actually bring corporate and startup together. All right. So that means apart from funding, there's most of the startup come to us, which we don't have, where we don't give, but we also actually have market access. So how we do it, market access, actually we work together with corporate. So yes, Activate program are still active. It's just that maybe currently we are still looking into how we can bring more corporate to be more open up to work with a uh, startup ecosystem. And we bit more curative this time. Because last time we just created a platform and, crop, and corporate just put their, uh, their challenge, they call it. And then looking for startup that can solve that challenge. And we are still going, I think we're going for the next phase soon. Any more questions? Um, not on Slider for now, but we do have a bit more time. So would anyone else on the floor like to ask uh, Mr. Yusni a question here? You can raise your hand. It's no issue. I'll come to you with the mic. I think they're yes. waiting for breakfast. <laughs> so again? Oh, okay. So the question here is, how aware so, so. can a new entrepreneur, which has less than two years, start learning, growing, or find a mentor with magic? Okay, good question. How many of you guys have come to our magic website? Those person who just asked question. Who asked this question? Raise your hand. Never mind. Okay. If you go to Magic website, we have, we have actually now a mentor program where we notice that actually one of the things that required by the startup actually is to get someone who has gone through the experience to share. So if you go to our website, there is a mentor uh, you know, uh, where you can actually select and then register first and then you can actually select a mentor that will be relevant to what you want to ask for. And we have now, we actually start bringing mentor from external. We started with just Magician. But now we have external mentor where subject matter expert will come in. And we will encourage you guys, please go to those websites and register yourself and you can have the mentorship. So the mentorship works is that you register and then you select a certain person that you want to meet and then you can, you can have the meeting one-to-one -one at your own convenience. Okay, so we have more questions over there. Um, the second one, does Magic bring in private investors to support the entrepreneurs? Qu definitely yes. So if, if, let's say, any one of you guys are aware about our Exeter program, so in our Exeter program where we run four months of the, that Exeter program, we're gonna, this, month gonna, sorry, this year going to start in somewhere in August until November. So currently in our database for investors, we have about close to 600 globally investors that actually are in our database. On average, we have about 100 to 120 investors will come to our demo day. But at the same time, if, let's say, any one of you guys are not part of the Exeter program, but still looking for an investors, we can come to us and we can actually help you to actually look into how we can actually connect you between those investors. That's no issue. All right. All right. How does Magic offer help to non-tech startup with release heavenly on digitalization? And how does non-tech startup doing digitalization? So this is where we're talking about innovation and creativity. All right. So... It's not only about ICT industry. We go across the board. For example, we even have from our co-working space where this uh, you know, founder of this um, laundry actually come to Magic and wanted to actually innovate their business. The only way for you, if let's say you are a, uh, you know, a laundry business, you have to open more shops, am I right? right? So what this guy brilliantly does is that they created like, um, uh, like uh, where you can actually drop your clothing and then use an app and then via the app, someone will collect your, your clothing and then wash it and put it back. And you make payment via the app. So we do that. We do that how we actually can support if they say non-tech non as well. Okay, so we have time for one more question. Let's do the one right at the top. Hi, Yusni. For Magic Rolls to open up the Asian market, how many success stories do you have so far? So currently, we actually have a few startups that have gone through our program. For example, like we went to in Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, if anyone know Storehub, all right? Yeah, Storehub have gone through our program, all right? And also, everyone know, every one of you actually use um, uh, what's the flower company? Sorry, Bloom <laughs> uh, There you go. Every one of you use Bloom all right, so Bloom this is also one of our programs that we've gone through. And recently, we have gone to um, uh, Indo uh, Vietnam with Bill Easy. So 
honestly, we don't have that many as I mentioned just now, right? What we promise to our co-partners in those countries, we're looking at between at least 10 to 15. But when we shortlisted, we only got five. So the question is that, if let's say, the entrepreneur themselves, the startup themselves are not ready, there's no value for us to bring that. But we are willing to do it because it's part of our mandate. And we want to see a success story. More success story, definitely. Any more questions? Okay, that's all the time we have for now. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions for Mr. Yusni, please feel free to look for him later on. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to help you out answer your questions. But for now, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Mr. Yusni Ramat Yusuf, the Director of ASEAN Centre of Entrepreneurship. Thank you.